Welcome to the free episode of Stock Market Pulse TV. My name is Eric, and today is Wednesday, May 25th. If you'd like to check out the premium Stock Market Pulse TV videos free for the next 30 days, head on over to stockoptionassassin.com forward slash free trial. So let's get into the charts here. Um, we had a lot happen the last couple of days, and, and the one question that I keep getting, um, and, and it's funny, CNBC – uh, talked about this a little bit is, is, you know, is this rally for real? Okay. So what, what do we mean by that? Is that, you know, can this rally be trusted? Um, I guess is the better way to say that. So when we look at the indexes, we obviously know, I'm going to switch to a, a week, a weekly chart. We obviously know that we're, we're nearing resistance. It's been resistance for, you know, basically a year now, the 21, um, you know, when on the SPY it's 20 you know 213 but it's about 2100 2130 if you look at the SPX and we're starting to approach that but I do want to point something out on the weekly chart I want to I want to give the bull some credit here so when you look at the DMI oscillator this is something I use to measure uh, the strength of rallies and and sell offs and things like that and for the longest time and uh, you know, really since, you know, beginning of 2015 is right here. The oscillator's kind of been in this tight range with a lot of downside momentum. And even when it kind of came back to the zero line here, that, that you know, tends to be resistance. And for those that have, um, you know, been following me for a while, you understand what that means, right? This is the reversal zone. Well, on the weekly chart, something different has happened in this recent rally. And I know it doesn't seem like that much. But the oscillator has actually pushed up to the level of 10. If you can see this little uh, number here as I move it around, it's at the level of 10. And when it does that, that is signaling a potential trend change. And so it doesn't mean you should necessarily, necessarily buy that. But we did get a nice consolidated pullback about four weeks. And we're getting a buy signal on the weekly chart. Uh, and, you know, I know it's only Wednesday. We had a couple of days, but it's looking pretty good so far. We have a buy signal where the oscillator starting to accelerate a little bit. And the DMI stochastic extreme is ticking up from an oversold condition. So previously, when we were oversold down here, um, you know, it was kind of hit or miss. Um, and that's because we were so negative here. The bears had taken over. But now the bulls are starting to push push the the envelope here so i wanted to you know kind of just give the weekly chart of the spy some credit for yes if you just look at this chart i think this rallies for real so what it, you know tlt is what um uh cnbc i forget the guy it's, it's one of the trading nation guys and basically what he said is that treasuries aren't really selling off and he's right OK, so if you look at the weekly chart of TLT, you're really not getting a sell off. Right. But at the same time, um, if you look at the momentum here, the momentum of TLT is starting to kind of, you know, go lower. Right. So it is weakening. And just because um, stocks are, are looking to move higher doesn't mean there's a perfect inverse relationship between bonds and stocks. So I just wanted to point that out that you can actually have in a, in a you know in a perfect world where you have a strong economy actually bonds and stocks can actually rally together okay i'm not saying that's going to happen right now i'm just saying you can't just say well bonds of you know let's go back to a daily chart tlt is you know it did in the last couple of days it really didn't do much but let me tell you what it did do tlt did sell off hard and now we have this little bit of a bear flag, right? So it kind of happened in here as well, and we, and we came back up. So right now, if anything, TLT has a bearish slant, and it's maybe range-bound. Um, but it doesn't mean that it's necessarily bad for stocks. So I disagree with what you know that article said about how TLT – um, really isn't selling off. And and I disagree. I mean, it's actually down on the day, right? So um, so anyway, so, you know, as of right now, you got to give the bulls um, the the uh, benefit of the doubt. Let's look at a couple of the other indexes real quick. Uh, we got the Qs, um, the NASDAQ. Um, let me zoom out a little bit. Um, it's looking strong as well. Definitely weaker than the other indexes, but it looks like it wants to at least retest this 112 area. The key for me right now, 
I think the reason why the markets are looking so strong is really the financials, though. So let's look at XLF. Um, and we're going to look at energy too real quick. And I know this is the, the free video. We're going to go into some individual names of how to play this, but in tonight's free video. So, um, but if you just look at the XLF, um, the, the, the general theme here is that um, the market seems to be comfortable with the rate hike that's potentially coming in June. I don't know if that's going to happen, obviously. Um, and the dollar is actually starting to trend higher. Right. So the dollar had been in this downtrend, you know, bad news, bad news. They're not going to be able to hike rates. All of a sudden there's good news. Right. And uh, the rate hikes back on the table and it could be as early as June. Um, inflation is doing better. Uh, so the dollar is starting to rally. And this is good for banks and banks are a big component of the SPY. So right now I think there's a little rotation into banks. And what we talked about with our members last in last week's video um, let, let's go over a couple bank names. I had, and I've tweeted this out before. If uh, if you follow me, you've probably seen this. But if we look at Citigroup, and I think I look at the, I tweeted this out. But um, let me just move this out of the way a little bit. Citigroup, similar to some of the other stocks, is in this sort of uptrend here, and and this is when this was the day that I actually talked about that Citigroup had busted out, it consolidated, and now it's moving up. And it's at some, some resistance right now. But given the strength in financials, I think it could probably get to the top of the channel. And we're looking for a move to about 50 bucks. So I'm currently in some Citigroup calls, some June. Uh, I'm like slightly in the money here. So I think it's the 44s. But, um, but I'm in some Citigroup calls with the idea that if you want to get long financials, I still think this is going to, for the rest of the year, you're going to be looking at value kind of stocks and when you look at the big banks and I noted this here and this is what what I tweeted out that Bank of America and Citigroup um, are the, of the big banks are the most undervalued okay so Citigroup was up you know 2.3 percent today I mean gee I mean they're all the banks are going to go up but I think Citigroup has a better um, catch up uh, you know, upside, if you will. So I like that one. And let's take a look at Bank of America real quick. Very similar channel sort of sort, uh, situation. If we look at JP Morgan, okay, up one and a half percent. And yeah, but it's already kind of at the top of the channel and it's near here. So again, I think that Bank of America and Citigroup are undervalued compared to their, their peers and they could get a little bit more uh, momentum. Okay. So again, if, 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 if Citigroup were to catch up to JP Morgan, which is already up here, it's got more upside potential. So of the big banks, I think, um, I think you go with one of those. So to wrap up the free video, um, I do want to take a look at a smaller, another undervalued stock. It's a little bit of a bottom, uh, fisher, if you will. Um, this is first bank court ticker FBP. And I want to zoom in on, on this a little bit. So again, on the same uh, premium video last week, I, I talked about the stock, how it had a nice bull flag. I kind of like these under the radar stocks. And this thing is up pretty nicely over the last five days with really not the volatility of the S&P. So this was a, you know, this is one of the things you'll get with the Stock Market Pulse TV premium video. So if you guys are interested in that, again, go to stockoptionassassin.com forward slash free video. And we're going to be talking about FBP. And I got three or four other undervalued Momo stocks that we're going to be looking at tonight. So we'll see you guys at the next update.